Welcome to the Skills Baseline podcast, where we discuss best practices in upskilling and hiring in running a workforce effectively with uh, global data, AI, and learning and development leaders to help you make the skills of your workforce a competitive advantage. I'm very lucky and excited for today's conversation with Andrew Eng. Andrew, you have a lot to teach us about AI strategy, about how to bring an AI vision to life. So uh, let's dive right in. Now, thanks, Ed. It's great to be here. Thank you. Andrew, you've seen and participated actively in multiple AI uh, transformations within enterprises. What has been your checklist uh, for success? You know, I wrote online a, um, a document called the AI Transformation Playbook that summarizes some of those lessons learned and so find it online. But I do think that um, uh, mm-hmm. consistent with the theme of this podcast, people are at the center of an AI transformation. Um, to share one example, I think there are a lot of organizations wanting to adopt AI. I often recommend start small, do a small project, deliver a small win, and then use that to lad up to bigger and bigger successes. And one thing that, while many organizations do that, one thing that isn't always fully appreciated is that a large part of the purpose of that small initial project is to give people the training uh, to, to gain the skills to make AI work for your organization so that you can then use that first set of skills to do the second project, which grows even bigger skills, and then um, uh, you know keeps on growing the capability from there. So I think, like in many things, when you have the right team with the right people, life is just so much better. And the team almost magically solves so many problems. But when you don't have the right team, don't have the right skills in the team, then life is just it's just much harder to get something to work well. Yeah, I, I completely understand. And, and you, you've seen that firsthand at Google, at Baidu, at Landing AI and the work you do with, with the customers there. Uh, how did you ensure that you had the skills and talents in-house to deliver on your AI vision, on the strategic initiatives? Yeah, I want to share a couple of thoughts on that. So when I was you know, building um, the Google Brain team from scratch or when I was uh, recruiting into uh, by doing any AI, um, I think I was very fortunate to be able to interview and find great people to work with me to to build up various organizations. Um, uh, Landing AI, the most recent of these teams, I, I think has actually really benefited from uh, being able to use Workera uh, for skills assessment in the hiring process. So I think that's actually really been great to help us screen recruit um, strong AI talent into into Landing AI. And, and as you can tell. You know, I'm really proud of Landing AI's AI team. Also really proud of the early AI teams I had built. And Landing AI, I would say, really benefited from, from work Harris tools for that granular skills, and skills assessment that made hiring more efficient. And then I want to share one more thought. Um, when building a startup or a small team or something, you know, a lot of people will say, and, and I agree, that the first 10 members of the team, that determines the success of the organization. Um, And I think I saw that, you know, at at various of these organizations that I've led. What I think is not as strongly or as frequently appreciated is that as an organization grows, um, say you have a hundred person company, well, a hundred person company is often comprised of a lot of, you know, five or 10 person teams. And so the success or failure really up and down the organization really depends on how good are these five or 10 person teams that you have at multiple levels throughout the organization. So as an executive trying to build an organization with, you know, hundreds or maybe thousands of people, how do you ensure that you have that good talent so that all of the projects upside, up and down the organization have a way to succeed? I think it's, 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 it's just a very difficult challenge. Um, and, and I think, you know, tools to give leaders more visibility and the ability to um, and short, great talent, great mentorship, develop the individual while you're the organization. Tools like that, I think, are, are a game changer uh, for what we could do as leaders trying to drive AI transformations today. Yeah, that, that's very inspiring. And, uh, and you know, one of the unique aspects of AI curers uh, for individuals and companies is how fast it's moving. It's evolving so rapidly. It feels like every year there is a new trend or a new hot thing. You've talked a lot about data-centric AI, 
uh, we're seeing generative AI. And I was reading the batch this week with uh, all your insights on ChatGPT. Uh, and there will be other trends. I would love to hear from you. What are the next trends and how can uh, leaders make sure their teams are keeping up with those trends? Yeah, I, you know, honestly, AI is moving so fast. I, I feel like I need to work hard every week to, to, to just stay up as well. Um, honestly, I think, um, I actually count on the batch to help keep me up to speed as well, because we have a large editorial team that looks at all corners of the internet to, you know, understand the latest technology. So the batch tries to cover what matters in AI right now, uh, as a resource for, for hopefully, um, people watching this podcast as well. Um, and, and then in terms of the challenge of keeping up with the skills, one of the interesting things about AI is the development of technology it means it's now getting increasingly fragmented, by which I mean no one person can know everything about AI today. And different companies, different projects need different subsets of the skills. Maybe one business really needs great NLP capability. A different one needs to figure out generative AI. A different one needs to get, you know, decision sheets working on tablet data. It's actually increasingly diverse. So that type of, um, uh, and so I think when leadership in an organization starts to have a view on what's the portfolio of skills that an organization needs, because again, not everyone needs to know the exact same thing. Even different people in an organization have to collectively represent the portfolio of skills needed to execute on the one or more projects of that company. Um, it's a very complicated landscape, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, it, yeah, uh, it, it is complicated, but we get that right. That lets it organization execute so much better than, than if this piece isn't, you know, isn't done well. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And uh, I have seen through work Kara more and more companies trying to develop skills ontologies that define in a granular way what different projects require in terms of skills, what different teams will need over the next year or two. And the ability to define a good ontology will be a game changer in the company's ability to develop more skills and deliver on their projects, in my opinion. Yeah. And then I guess I know some of um, the yeah, workers users kind of were looking to work out, we're looking for use for the yeah, the help to think through the ontology. And one of the challenges is AI is changing so rapidly that ontology changes. And so the skills you need, you know, the skills that are available um, uh, changes. And so having hope to build and customize that ontology, assess against it, develop the team members against that ontology, all of those things really help the organization execute AI projects efficiently. Um, but I think it's interesting because AI is changing so rapidly, the ability of a company to bring an outside help is more important than ever because an insular company that just tries to do everything inside without getting help or looking for outside expertise, it's just, it's just tough because I don't think there's any single company, even the largest companies don't have control over everything in AI. So I think everyone, even the most, you know, elite AI teams kind of have to have to look around at the world and, and even get ideas from all sides. Yeah, makes sense. And 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 you know, well, there is the topic of of a T shape individual uh, or career in AI, where, where you have foundational skills that allow you actually to pick up more perishable skills, which are very useful but may not have a half-life that is as long as the foundational skills like math or linear algebra or coding. Uh, Deep Learning Not AI just launched math for machine learning and data science. Uh, and we also have tests on Workera for people to test their math skills in the context of AI and data science. How important is math for AI or other foundational topics for AI? Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that. So, um... Uh, Luis, um, Luis Serrano is a fantastic instructor, is teaching math and machine learning and data science uh, with deep learning Dio and Coursera. Uh, it's a really good specialization. And I think what I saw is that um, while you can do good work in machine learning without knowing that much of the math, which is why I often say don't worry about it when it comes to some math, mathematical topics, the intent is yeah, don't get stuck in the math. You can often get stuff to work and do really well um, uh, without stopping for a long time to master the math. On the flip side, um, a deeper knowledge, deeper understanding of some of the math has served me and many machine learning people well in honing the intuition to make the right decisions in building a machine learning system. So 
I'm actually really proud of the math and MR data science mm-hmm. specialization that Deep Learning AI launched. And I think this is one of those places where, um, you know, it's, it's often uh, up to the leader of an organization or uh, one individual to recognize when and whether learning a skill like math or really any other skill is important for an individual and organization um, and then to hopefully guide themselves or guide an organization or guide someone you may be mentoring to go and gain the skill to give that team that additional capability, which will result in, you know, more successful execution of machine learning projects. Yeah, that, that, that makes very much sense. And, and, uh, and I, I've also, uh, experienced that the, uh, the other and, and, and last question I have for you, Andrew, is that you, you've been working for years on democratizing access to AI creation. W- what are the key skills needed to build AI today, and I would love to hear it for an individual building AI, but also what is the ideal profile of an executive who's trying to build AI today for their organization? You know, yeah, for an individual, it's been rapidly changing. Once you had to know, you know, Tesla, PyTorch, uh, once you had to learn even harder things uh, to build AI systems. With low-code, no-code systems, uh, like what then the is working on, like give a TED talk about this, I think it should get easier and easier. I'm excited about democratizing access to AI because um, I think you, when I think about literacy, hundreds of years ago, society thought that maybe not everyone needed to read and write. Why do you need to be literate? You can just, you know, usually go to some sort of holy building or listen to the high priests and priestesses or the monks read some sort of holy book to you. So just sit in the audience, why do you need to learn to read or write? Fortunately, societies figured out that uh, we can all you know, build a much richer society if a lot of people are literate. Today, in terms of AI, I think we're in that era where most people count on the high priests and priestesses in the large tech companies, that is the engineers in the large tech companies to build AI for them. But because of the very diverse set of use cases in the world, I think we can be build a richer society if everyone isn't just the user of AI, but can be a creator of custom AI systems. One way that the world has changed is um, the digitization of society means that every business, frankly, even every team, and even every individual has custom data. A recruiting team you know, has data on how their recruiting function is going. A small Pizzeria has data on how that small pizzeria is going. And so the ability for a lot more teams to build custom AI will be important rather than just use AI that some large tech company built. Um, and so I think for an individual to embrace this, you know, figure out where you are, where the goal to be a builder, this seems important. And then also at the um, executive level that you mentioned, Jan, I think that if executives have a basic working knowledge of what AI can and cannot do, that often helps um, Senior senior executives make better decisions on what to invest in, and then of course the theme of this podcast too to figure out the talent strategy to get the right talent and the right skills to execute on that vision. Um, is the, the the opportunities for individuals and businesses to build AI systems? It seems huge. It seems to be frankly the the size of potential of doing this just seems to get even bigger every year. But both individuals and executives um, having the right skills to do that. Feels, feels like still an important bridge to gap to unlock a lot of this, um, a lot of this, this potential. Yeah. And I, I, I say also that, uh, organizations who will adopt AI and upskill at the pace of improvement of AI, uh, with high learning velocity, uh, will be the ones who will, uh, build the future and reinvent themselves. And so. I, uh, one thing that we're really working on is, is to uh, try to increase the learning velocity and the skilling velocity of all organizations and across multiple roles, which is a, a big metric they care about most recently. Yeah. That's really great. And the other thing is, you know, people didn't talk about learning velocity, but the ability to measure that and say, oh, our learning velocity went up, the experiment and make sure uh, uh, start to have KPIs to drive that in a systematic thing. So it's not just a wish list, but a measurable, actionable thing. I think that, that is actually uh, uh, a very exciting thing for organizations to be able to do. Yes. And, and being able to 
benchmark against best in class AI organization, being able to track if uh, 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 the progress is faster or as fast as some of the best in class organization is something that uh, uh, our, our partners really appreciate. Yeah, and I just told you with you, I think many leaders will sleep better at night knowing that, you know, yes, my organization is at this level, but but most people don't know that. And, and knowing whether it's good or bad, right? Knowing uh, if it's good to sleep better at night, if it's not yet there, you really want to know that. So I, I think uh, uh, I fully agree with, with, uh, with, the, with the vision you're laying out here. No, thank you very much, Andrew, for all the insights. Uh, we learned a lot, as always, with you. Um, and so uh, I hope to see you soon. But but thank you again. Thanks, Ken. Always fun to chat and hang out, talk, talk about these things.